Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer, also in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Irons, let's first start with guidance from the CDC. Uh, uh, more changes in guidance. Uh, this time is about testing fully vaccinated people. Can you give the background on the change in guidance from the CDC? Sure, Todd. Um, so basically, the new guidance says that fully vaccinated Americans can largely skip getting tested for the coronavirus. The CDC said last week that most people who have received the full course of shots and have no COVID-19 symptoms don't need to be screened for the virus, even if they're exposed to someone infected. The change represents a new phase in the epidemic. After nearly a year in which testing was the primary weapon against the virus, vaccines are now central to the response and have driven down hospital and deaths dramatically. At this point, we really should be asking ourselves whether the benefits of testing outweigh the costs, which are lots of disruptions, lots of confusions, and very little clinical or public health benefit. That was Dr. David, um, Dr. A. David Paul Thiel of the Yale School of Public Health, who championed widespread testing at colleges last year. Um, while vaccinated people can still catch the virus, they face little risk of serious illness from it and are also less likely to spread to others. Um, and positive test results can lead to what many experts now say are unnecessary worry and interruptions at work, home and school, such as quarantines and shutdowns. However, some health officials worry that the CDC's abrupt changes on the need for masks and testing have sent the message that COVID-19 is no longer a major threat, which isn't true. There's also still no easy way to determine who has been vaccinated and who hasn't. And this guidance, like the mask guidance, applies to fully vaccinated people. And that is the message, uh, get vaccinated. And speaking yes. of that, can you talk about progress we're seeing on the vaccination front? So it's slow, but we're making progress. The CDC said on Saturday about 162.5 million people have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, including about 129 million people who have been fully vaccinated. Percentage-wise, that means nearly 49% of the population, and that's the total population, has received at least one dose and nearly 39% are fully vaccinated. Now, looking at adults only, which was the number that President Biden put forward for his goal, more than 61% of adults have received at least one shot. And although the pace has slowed, the share is still growing by about two percentage points per week. So nearly two in five people in the United States are now fully vaccinated and about 1.8 million people are receiving a shot each day. And that's good news. But I think the, um, when you dig one kind of layer deeper in those numbers, what you're seeing is pretty wide variations geographically. And so that's another wrinkle, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, vaccination rates vary wi widely across regions, with New England surging ahead of the national average and much of the South lagging far behind. In five of the six New England states, more than 60% of residents are at least partly vaccinated, according to data from the CDC. But it's a, a completely different story in the South, where Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Louisiana, and Tennessee have the country's lowest rates of residents who have received at least one shot. The rates in these states are all below 40%, with Mississippi at 33% at the bottom of the list. Um, you know, the White House and state governments, after relying on mass vaccination sites for months, are now turning their focus to more targeted, smaller scale efforts to vaccinate underserved and harder to reach communities. And this means both access and hesitancy will increasingly be addressed through physicians and individual exam rooms across the country. Well, the, uh, you know, the, the issue of vaccine mandates uh, is still controversial, but one place we are starting to see uh, requirements is at, at the college level for, uh, I suppose, for next fall. What are you, what are you seeing there in terms yeah. of the trends? Yeah, hoping for a return to normal. More than 400 colleges and universities are requiring students to be vaccinated for COVID-19. You know, this started with one university in March to a dozen by the first week of April, and the trickle has become a tide over the last month. But even though it seems like a lot, the 400 campuses make up only about 10% of the nation's roughly 4,000 colleges and universities. Because the FDA has authorized only the emergency use of COVID vaccines at this point, many 
many universities have added a caveat that their mandates are contingent on one of the vaccines obtaining final regulatory approval, but they would allow students to return to campus after receiving any of them. So uh, just on to kind of a, a bigger picture level here with uh, cases and deaths uh, reaching kind of uh, lower levels not seen since last summer here in the States. What are the actual numbers? Yeah, um, so the numbers are still going up, but more slowly. You know, currently new case, uh, total cases in the United States, 33,117,923 and 589,893 deaths. Um, the United States is adding fewer than 30,000 cases a day for the first time since June of last year. Um, and deaths are as low as they've been since the summer. Nearly everywhere the U.S. outlook is improving. If, you're, if you like to think in terms of seven day averages, new cases are down 19.5 percent, hospitalizations are down 15.1 percent, and deaths are thankfully down 10.5 percent. Um, no state is seeing a major increase in new cases, and many have seen declines of 40 percent or more in the last two weeks. And, you know, add to, add to that also, um, the share of COVID uh, tests coming back positive has fallen to below 3 percent for the first time since widespread testing began. That's amazing news. Yeah. Uh, any uh, kind of hot spots or uh, big declines uh, that we're seeing in different states? Um, yes, you know we talked about Michigan a lot over the last over the last uh, few months. The cases have been falling for a month in Michigan, the state with the worst spring surge. About 1,400 cases were identified on Sunday, down from around 7,800 daily in mid-April. And as of this week, California has one of the lowest case and hospitalization rates in the country, and it's now closer closer to fully reopening. You know, state officials there on Friday said they would lift requirements on social distancing and limits on the number of people indoors on June 15th. Um, California is the latest state to release its reopening plan, joining an already growing slate of states that have reopened or are set to next month. Good news. Uh, any final uh, messages from the AMA uh, that folks should know about this week? Yeah, on Friday, the AMA commended the Biden administration and HHS for funding additional support to expand pediatric mental health care access. This funding will make behavioral health care more accessible and equitable to children and adolescents by better integrating telehealth services into pediatric primary care. Physicians, parents, and others who work with and care about young people welcome tangible support such as this to improve the mental health of children, adolescents, and families emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, thanks, Dr. Irons. I uh, appreciate you being here and sharing your perspective. We'll see you again next week for another update. In the meantime, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. For more information on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today and please take care.